What's up, podcast audience? I've been putting a lot of eye drops in my eyes lately. I'm going to try to attempt this. Tyler. Oh. I had both my lenses replaced. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Mid-40s, and I have cataracts. I thought you just got them retouched up, too, a couple months ago. No, I just got them both done. Oh, that was what is it, yeah. Both done. I forgot. I remember you were out for a little bit. How do I look? Like a... Greek goddess. You like this a country, goddess? A country music Greek goddess. Do you oh, yeah, like I'm this hat? Goddess term. Do you like this hat? Yeah, it looks awesome on you. How do I get one of those? Well, it's funny because we are now partnered with the one and only Resist All Hats. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Resist All Hats. I like that they do it. They live it every day. We've had Tough Heatman on here. Cody Johnson's coming on. You know Kojo. He's got a great music career going on. But Dustin and Mary Jane and Sadie and the entire family down in Dallas that resist all hats, just amazing people. They live the cowboy, the Western, living off the land every day. So it kind of jailed, you know? Yeah. We, we work with farmers. We work with ranchers. We work with rustlers. We work with wranglers. We work with rodeo and PBR, and they're all a bunch of hunting athletes. And bam, we're with resist all. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Do you look Beautiful at me hats. like I'm Urban Cowboy John Travolta or more of like uh, Tough Hedeman on a bull in the 89 World Finals? Uh, you're, you're a good cross just because I know you. I'm thinking you're a little bit more Urban Cowboy. But I don't but have any You make it work though. You don't, you're, not the, you're not the Cowboy Day In Day Out vibe, but this is, this is like the Urban Chic vibe. I don't know. Do you think I would have a Wrangler butt, like a nice Wrangler butt if I wore those? i not going to no comment. comment. <laughs> Plead the fifth. <laughs> but, but I don't look like Florida Georgia Line. No, no. Today's episode of the podcast, I'm going to ask Tyler Stark about this one also. What do you think of this brand right here, buddy? Jack Links, well. You've been hey, hunting with me for five years. It's always around. I love it. It's the best blind snack out there. You can't go wrong with beef jerky, you know. Plus, hey, we're in Wisconsin. They're from Wisconsin. Sounds like it's another match made in heaven for camp. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, them being in Wisconsin and the Dakotas and owned by the Link family, Jack and Troy, amazing outdoor family, amazing story, amazing how big they've got. Have you had the cold craft? Uh, I don't think I have, but I'll tell you, I, I still to this day, I, I don't believe they do this campaign as much as they used to, but I love the messing with Sasquatch commercials back in the day. <laughs> they still do it, but I do like, I like how every single time somebody gets bow waxed in the Sasquatch commercials, <laughs> like, yeah, there's no problem. Like he'll kick them in the chest and they'll like fly out the screen. But it's, it's funny how you can take the, the story goes is that the, the heritage of the link family, it was all done through kind of like this competition showing out like once a week these people would bring different dishes to work and it happened to be beef jerky we're wow we're gonna do like this jerky challenge and at that time the link family was in like the butcher shop business and the meat business and stuff and boom his his grandpa brings this idea of jerky to this little competition work deal and they're like, holy smoke, this is unbelievable. History was written. That's an awesome story. I, I didn't know that back then. And now they're into the cold craft. Have you had these, these cold craft refrigerated snacks? No. It's Genoa salami and, and Colby Jack cheese, uh, different cheeses, different salamis, different meat sticks. I got a bunch in their fridge oh, here I'm, for this I'm week. I'm grabbing some then. Oh, dude. And they have, they come like there's no markup on them. Retailers can't get them and mark them up. They come already stamped with the price. Troy wants to sell them out. And they are so quality, dude. High protein, no starch, no carbs. Little tiny bit of corn syrup, I guess, so you're getting a little bit of sugar, but God, they're tasty, dude. Oh, Jack, we're getting that. Links, thank you for what you do for all of our properties here at Banded the Foul Life. This life ain't for everybody. Today's episode of the podcast is also brought to you. I showed you this product the other day, Flask Cap. I'm jealous of that too. You always have something new and cool, exciting at camp, and uh, that is something that I could see myself using a lot. Should we get some with Traeger on it? Ooh, we could talk. Traeger. <laughs> I have those Gator coolers down there. You see that Gator cooler with the pad? Yeah, those are I got a bunch down with Traeger pads. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, look good. It's awesome. I'm kind of giving away the next partner of the podcast, but Flask Cap is innovative. It's a patented design, and it allows for safety. It allows for convenience. It allows for, hey, when you're on the boat, you're on the beach, you're not allowed to have glass, but you want to have an adult cocktail. You got your mixer down here on some ice. It comes with a cap. You hit the button one time after you fill your cap with your, your beverage spirit of choice. Obviously, ours here at the Foul Life and Bandit is... Jack Daniels, Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey. Enjoy it responsibly. Never, ever allow underage drinking. But you can have it right there. You're, you're, you're responsible. You, everything's in moderation. You could hit that, that tap at the top of the lid, and it releases a one-ounce shot into your mixer, and boom. 
Yeah, there's a lot more smart people in the world than I am because I, I think that is one of the coolest, slickest inventions I've seen. That's so cool. I, I need one for the summertime. I love it. I absolutely freaking love flask cap. We have two left. Sorry, folks, to bore you, but we got to pay the bills. We're trying to do it in an organic way. These organic commercial reads, they take some talent. Later on in the podcast, I'm going to have my man, that voice behind the other microphone. His name's Tyler. Not going to tell you his last name because if you hear his last name, you're going to think that he's a superhero because he shares his last name with a superhero character. I don't remember which one. Is it Batman hmm. or Iron Man? Iron Man. Iron Man. Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. God, I should have paid more attention to DC Comics. Today's episode is also brought to you by this guy right here, Tyler. You have one of these. You I do. met with the Zach Brown Collective. Down I, I, in had a, I had a pleasure going down and spent some time at Camp Southern Ground and, and got a tour of their little facility there. Um, I, I tell you, that's one of the funnest things I bring. I blow people's minds on that. We always float the uh, Weber River out in Utah in summer. And I just tie that to my tube and I throw my wallet, my phone in there, and I float behind me and I'm playing music. And people are like, what the heck is going on? I'm like, dude, you got to check these guys 100 out. 100% waterproof boxes. sealed. Yeah, incredible. You, you have a hole here that you can leave empty if you're going dry ground. Pop the Pelican case, open it up. You have your plug right here. Comes out of this slot. Put your plug in. Charge your phone too on the go. It all charges all out too, which 100 is 100% awesome. waterproof and sealed. So like what you're saying is a perfect application. I'm fly fishing in my float tube and I'm out. I got this toad behind me. It's got my pistol in there to where if something happens, I can reel it in real quick and be ready. I got my wallet in there. I got my fishing licenses in there. I might even have a beverage in there. You can fill this with ice if you want. 50 hours on one battery charge. Listen to your favorite podcast, which is obviously this one for everybody in the whole entire world. But then you can also listen to music. Like we just were jamming to 30 out six by our good friend Brent Cobb, and then you could charge your phone on it. Plug it right into the USB here and get a great phone charge on it. And the sound quality is what I love. This is the DB1 here, the one speaker. It comes with a DB2, the two speaker. This down here, this little control, I'm sure you have this on yours, but you can pair up to eight speakers at a time. And you could have surround sound at your pool, at your summer gatherings, your family reunions. I don't go to family reunions because they tend to scare me a little bit. You know, I'm, I know you're from West Virginia and you have some of that deliverance banjo stuff going on in your family. So do I, okay? So I kind of stay away from the family <laughs> reunions. But Deemer Box, Zach Brown Collective, thank you so much. I got to thank James Deemer too, the inventor of the Deemer Box. I the mean, story that's, that's, of how this deal was invented is unreal. You talk about every, you hear in business a lot, the, the great ideas come out of what? Necessity. Our, our good friends down in Texas and Paris, they hit a cow, a uh, longhorn on daddy's ranch, destroys the entire front grill of his Dodge pickup. Shouldn't have been driving a Dodge. This is a life lesson. You get a Ford, this kind of stuff doesn't happen. But, God, that is way biased to say, but geez, could you imagine riding around in a Dodge truck? Well, like, I'm, how a weird I'm a Chevy guy. So oh, that's I, just as bad. <laughs> We're going to erase that part that he just said that. Thank you, Ford Trucks, for everything you do for us here. But... It come out of necessity, he goes into his shop and he starts welding and fabricating and boom, he comes up with a badass bumper, puts it on his dad's truck, he's the ranch truck, drives it around town to the local cafe or whatever in this little small town, Texas. What happens? Another farmer goes, another rancher goes, I need one of those. Builds it for him. Another guy goes, I need one of those. Builds it for him. And now they're bodyguard bumpers. Yeah, fantastic brand too. Amazing brand. Salt of the earth people too. Some of the nicest people I've Craig, ever had Kelly chance to talk with. Yep. Malico. That's how this brand was done. He's in Alaska. He's a sound tech for the show Survivor. They're in season 17 in Alaska, 14 or 17. So he comes up. They're like, I, I need this way to get audio out. So he takes this Pelican case out of one of the camera guy's arsenal, starts messing with it, wiring it up, and takes this speaker cover, puts it in there, and develops just a speaker. He wasn't even thinking of the storage capacity or, or the potential of this storage part of it when he does it goes and you know how weather is in alaska you could be up there on a fishing trip or a hunting trip or whatever and all of a sudden the storm moves in you're not moving people have been stranded up there for weeks you know waiting on their plane to be able to get in to pick them up so he goes you know what come to the hotel room we're gonna have some drinks we're gonna hang out they're stranded right takes this out starts playing music on it and everybody in the hotel room is like holy shit i want one of those and he's opening it up he's like oh you can still store stuff in it and bam here comes deemer box out of necessity, he needed to do a little prop, you know, audio deal for the show Survivor, and James Deemer comes up with this idea. And now it's mastered. Smart, smart. Today's man. episode of the Foul Life Podcast, last but not least, y'all love our cooking segments here, and we owe those in a huge way to one brand. Since 1987, I was born in 1987. That's a lie, but I'll <laughs> let you depict that. Traeger Grills. Yes, sir. You've been with them for a while now. Yeah, coming up in six years. It's been an awesome brand to work for. Really proud to represent them. I love them all. I get so giddy when I see one. Like when people like 
They'll see cars like there's hot rod guys. There's Harley Davidson or Indian motorcycle guys. If I see a Mallard duck or a Traeger grill, I might as well be in heaven. Like that's how I look at them. I take so much pride. I don't even want to see a fingerprint on my grill when we're done cleaning it. And then you put it back up on that shelf for the next day. You pull it out, you open that lid and you're just like, I'm like freaking Picasso, dude. Not me personally. I'm just saying that's how you <laughs> hey, should you feel. Know, you, you can throw down on there. You, you're, you're a culinary artist in your own right. Own right. But it, it man or woman, boy or girl, you can become what I have termed the backyard aficionado on a Traeger grill. And I don't want to just serve something to where people are like, ah, that's pretty good. I want people to go, are you serious? That was duck. And Traeger helps me do that. Yep, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the th things I think is the most impressive thing about the the tool is, is when you talk wild game specifically, you know, I think we've talked about this for years, but gay meat is intimidating for people. One, most people don't know how to go out and harvest it or get it themselves. 100%. But then when they do, nobody can cook it right. Um, nobody can. And, and it's, uh, you know, with the fat content and being so lean, that there's a really sort of skill set that you have to develop because it's delicate meat. You've worked hard to get that meat on your table. Well, a Traeger is going to make that process smoother for you, and it's going to ensure that you have the tastiest, most moist, delicious meat that you can possibly eat. And it's one of those brands to where, like, you think about Benelli. Okay, they come out the Super Black Eagle too. Then George Thompson, who you've hunted with in camp, I mean, the VP of Product Development at Traeger US, or uh, sorry, at Benelli USA, he says we're coming out with a new Super Black Eagle. I'm like, for what? There's nothing better you can do. Like, but that's the genius of product development and research and development and R and D. How much better can you make a freaking Ironwood 1300? How I mean, a, a Timberline 1300. How much better can you make an Ironwood barrel and the deliverance of the convection heat and the smoke and all? Now you got the Wi-Fi and the the Wi-Fi, or they call it, and everything that goes into the new Traeger app. And now on top of that, you guys are coming out with what we're going to talk about first today. I want to get back into product development about what's you know coming out in the grill market. But tonight we're going to enjoy some different foods, and they are thought of by the Traeger family, but they're now offered in a form of here is pretty much a ready-made meal. Here's the instructions. Here's the ingredients. Throw it on your grill and voila, we're going to have ribs and chicken tonight. Tell me a little bit about this new program and what's going on. Yeah, we're, we're super excited. Uh, it officially launched nationwide here at the beginning of uh, this month. Uh, you can find it at TraegerGrills.com, but it's called Traeger Provisions. Um, and, and really, you nailed it. Uh, our goal for as long as I can remember being at the brand is really just striving to educate people, create, make them better. It doesn't matter, just like you, you do, you know, you're going working out, you're shooting your gun every day, you're trying to get better. Well, we want to give that same kind of experience to the consumer and, and make cooking more attainable and easier. Uh, so we came out with the Trigger Provisions. Um, they are sourced, high quality sourced meats. Uh, we have a, a Wagyu A5 Australian beef brisket. We have a heritage bred uh pork spare ribs. We have a poulet rouge chicken. For those that you don't know, that's a French raised chicken. And that is probably one of the tastiest birds aside from what Chad's shooting and cooking at snacks or camp. Um, obviously that's duck and waterfowl, but uh, we love it. So yeah, the way this works is you can go online, you can choose your number of people you want to ser uh, serve. We make boxes up to 10 people. You choose your protein, you select your sides. Everything you need to create that comes right into the box, and it really is allowing you to take less time figuring out how to perfect this recipe. We're gonna make this foolproof for you, but also give that time back to you to spend with your family or friends. So, what a great name! How does this name come about? I know that one of the things that I'm so impressed with about Traeger is the team, the unity. And the brainstorming. I've been in some brainstorming sessions with you guys. You got big offices where you go in and it's nothing but dry erase boards. And you just get up there and throw paint at the walls. Some of it sticks. Some of it falls off. Some of it's erased right away. Some of it stays up there for a, uh, for a couple weeks. And you're able to be like, oh, let's revisit that. Provisions is a badass word. I, we, we have a new brand called The Provider. I think that's a great name for a brand, right? Our cookbook, our dry rubs, the provider mentality of food to fork and, or I mean, filled to fork and living off the land and honing that skill set to really be able to be a good hunter, fisher, gardener, raise your own beef, raise your own lambs, raise your own chickens, raise your own pigs, whatever you do in life, do it right. But that word provisions is like a very well sought out word to include in a ready-made meal or a meal that can be done in minutes and taste unbelievable. How do you remember where you were? Were you part of this process of the naming with the brand team? Because you're going to take that brand name and you're going to go to the masses with it in the marketing department for Traeger. 
How do you come up with that? Or how does the team come up with that name? And how does that one stick? You, you know, you nailed it, Kim. It comes back to just making sure we have quality team members around you. I, I wasn't part of the naming of this, but I, I've been involved in naming products over the years. Um, and, and you nailed it. You know, we sit down and we just start talking to each other. We start throwing fun ideas out. Somebody riffs off something. It's almost, I go back to, it's take back to music almost. You know, you ask Brett Cobb how he writes a song. They sit down there with some like-minded people and they just start getting to know each other. They start talking, throwing ideas, spitting off of each other. And all of a sudden you find the right thing. And you know, I can't exactly say how or why we chose it, but I think it's such a fitting name from that, you know, provisions, it's, it's your food, it's, it's what you need. And, and we're providing this to you in a high quality format and making this so that everything is right there and you're going to have an elevated meal that you don't have to go out and figure out. So how does it work? You go on and is it kind of like a program of a, of a kit? Is it, is it all a cart? Can you mix these or is it like tonight we're going to do the chicken and then we're going to do the ribs, a, an American barbecue and a French spin on some chicken. French are known for their culinary art. I understand this, but can I go in there and get just some ribs and a chicken or do I have to get the entire kit of ribs and sides or you know what I'm saying? Is yeah, it, I do, yeah. So I mean, right now how it's set up, and then this could be something that's a, a future evolution of the, the product, but right now it's you, you choose your protein, you have four or five different sides to choose from. You select the sides that you think uh, you'd like with that dish. We obviously have recommendations on our, our site that kind of pair the dishes up. You can choose your dessert. Um, but I, I can see that being an evolution. I, I'm not exactly positive, but this has literally been in market for a month now, and it's been really well received. It's I mean, it's incredibly sourced proteins beautiful side dishes and you know makes it easy but what if i want chad ward matt Pittman, chad mendez or somebody to cook this for me can i pick on the website to fly one of these individuals out through the traeger app and say i would like chad ward from whiskey bent barbecue to cook my meal for me is this offered no that's not but hey you gave me a good idea Maybe there's a VIP service we could deliver on. I think that that would be cool. You get a little net jet deal. Ward gets on there. He comes off on a red carpet kind of deal, like a little town community welcomes him into their arms. We put him on a hay wagon or just like a flatbed trailer, drive him through town as a parade. Traeger's here. The provisions are here. And then he throws down on this like community style barbecue. You guys have so much experience in this style, but I, what I'm, I know that that's kind of a joke, but it's really not because what I've seen a man like Chad Ward do. I just rewatched an episode that we ran in Iowa. You were there. Mm -hmm. We raised, we were supposed to raise $3,000 for the local wrestling team. We raised 12, nine new mats, new singlets, kid gets killed in a, a farming accident, head on collision on a dirt road. The other one was the police officer that was that his partner got shot and killed. He got shot in the hip was almost, almost bled out. Um, we, we get with George Brett and the Kansas City Royals. We get with the local media. We, we try to blow this up to raise awareness of the blue line and what these officers, men and women, are going through. He's stressed out. He's depressed now. He's got anxiety. He's got all these issues because of what he faced that day. It's not a sob story. It's life. And companies and brands like Traeger that don't have to be involved in all this stuff. You guys get involved in these events that make people feel like they're part of something. That's why Traeger's successful. COVID was a great example of this, Tyler Stark. We, as a, a people, tend to get away from what really means the most. We rush, we bounce back and forth from a uh, little league game to ballet, to soccer practice, to this, to vacation, to, to, to what these, these time shares, we bounce back and forth from our job and our boss and our responsibilities. And now everything's on this freaking little four inch screen that we wish we could get connected away from 24 this, you're connected all the time, social media, emails, texting. Well, you don't even call our mom barely anymore. We just send her a text. That's bullshit. So my point is, is that the, the if one thing positive come out of the pandemic, in my opinion, is that we're back in our backyards. We were home again, small groups, right? People started to reconnect in different reconnect, ways. You right? start thinking about w different things now. It's not the priority. Your phone may not be the priority now when you can't go out anywhere. You're stuck with your family, but that's the, that's the genesis of the brand too. And something that we live hundred percent of the day is it's community. We, we support our consumers. We support the people that support the brand and you got to go out there and you got to be in that community and you got to give back. And that's how you build powerful brands is just being involved, boots on the ground and making sure the people that show you love get that same respect back. And this is a powerful brand. This is a, it went, we just went public. Yep. And uh, July. Incredible. I mean, that's a feat in itself. What an accomplishment to take it. And it's, we're not done here. I'm not speaking like I'm employed by Traeger, but I really feel back to what you just said. I feel like I'm part of the family because you guys invite so many different walks of life in. 
There are tattoo artists. There are guys that have been in more bar fights than I ever deal that just believe in Harley Davidson. You have MMA fighters. You have you have women that believe in that they're feeding their kids and they're cooking out wild game or different living off the land techniques. Every day you have so many different walks of life in the Traeger family, the Traeger hood, if you will, which by the way, that commercial this last year, absolutely genius how that freaking grill rolls off and they're cha- they're going down the road and you got all these different walks of life coming out. It wasn't just one stereotyped pit master, right? Like I am the greatest pit master in the world. I've won the Royal in Kansas City and the Memphis in May and the Houston Rodeo. And then I was grand champion at the Jack Daniels in Lynchburg. No, it's not like that. It's like, come as you are, like Kurt Cobain sang about. I miss Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Cobain. I really like Nirvana. That's another the conversation that you and I have to have because we share a lot of the same tastes in music. Uh, I don't like Cindy Lauper as much as you do. I know that she's <laughs> one of your favorites. But this Traeger hood is unreal. And my, where I'm going with this, Tyler Stark, is in today's world of hiding behind something, you have badass athletes that hunt and fish that can't even show their passion for the outdoors because they might be playing in a city that doesn't accept that mentality or that ideology. Traeger has the ability to say, whoa, Belding, you're using a gun, you're shooting a duck, you are using the Second Amendment rights of self-defense and defending what's yours, protection, security, peace of mind. Why do you think a brand like Traeger would take a chance on a brand like us or there's, I can name a bunch of other ones that make their living supporting the Second Amendment, supporting hunting and fishing and conservation and compassion for the animals we pursue and respect for the resource and the habitat. You guys could very easily turn and be like, hey, look, but that would be so wrong because you guys are teaching people how to cook meat. You can't just teach them how to cook a hot dog that you bought at the local Safeway. A lot of people are living off the land. And now there's been this explosion. You guys have been right in front of it, at the forefront of it, of all these custom beef farms. Ranches, pigs, chickens. We work with the 4-H. We talked about how you jumped in with the 4-H and the Future Farmers of America, the FFA with us. You guys believe in all of this. It would be a shame to turn your back and have a blind eye to hunting and fishing. Is this fair to say? I think it's fair to say. And this is something I personally believe that going talking, you know, cell phones and technology, things like that, people are disconnected to what they eat and where they go. You talk about all the different health problems in the world, you you know, and a lot of that comes back to nutrition and diets. And I think hunting and I grew up hunting and I've been a passionate hunter myself, which is why I'm so, I believe in this so much is we need to reconnect with how your food's to the table. Yeah. You can go in and buy organic, this organic, that, I don't even know what that means, you know, in, in, in a lot of terms. And a lot of that stuff is very loosely regulated in terms of what qualifies as natural versus organic versus that. You want to eat clean, you want to eat healthy, you put in the work, you feel satisfied, and you're going to eat the most organic, purest form of protein out there. And I, I personally, my, and through my work at Traeger, I, I want to reconnect people with where their food comes from. It's perfectly said. And I think that we we are have more momentum in that mindset than I've ever seen in my time on earth. Hunters have been doing this for hundreds and thousands of years. Hippies say that they, you know, that they're the organic lifestyle. That's fine. I don't care what you do. You could be a vegan. More power to you. But please educate yourself on what animals go through for the vegan lifestyle. I don't want to get into educating you on what a crop goes through to till up your vegetables, okay, and what's being done underneath that the core of the earth, okay? I know what's going on, and scientists have said this. If you're going to be against it, do it with scientific data and not your heart and, and empathy and, and, and uh, you know, just emotion all the time. We tend to speak. I'm not saying you don't have to be emotional, but you shouldn't go vote with your emotions. Oh, my God, they're killing Bambi. No, you can't do that. 10% of us hunt. In America, 10% of us are against hunting in America. There's 80% of the 330 or whatever million people that live in the United States of America at, at you know, with, with um, Alaska and Hawaii included that are kind of on the fence. I don't know. They don't really know about it. In our cities, there's not even a lot of people that know about hunting. They've never been outside of the city limits, which is another reason why hunting is so important. Mentorship and getting people involved and back to where their food comes from. It's easy to say, I'll eat beef, but do you really know what goes on in a slaughterhouse in Garden City, Kansas or Dodge City, Kansas? I've been to those slaughterhouses. I'm not against it. It's 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 what we do. But there's nothing wrong with the, an elk living the perfect life and then being able to be harvested with the perfect place shot 
And then heart, and then that bounty being served to food and to you, that food and that bounty being served to friends and family. There's that mentality is so perfect to me. There's nothing cleaner in my opinion. No, absolutely. And, and I lost my train of thought. It'll come to me in a second, but you know, talking specifically about like the, the store bought stuff, you know, I, I have a hard time understanding how people are against hunting, but we'll just go down to the local Walmart and pick up a steak. And, you know, you made the comment, yeah, slaughterhouses exist, food is there. Thank God for farmers and ranch of America. That's how this country's fed without them. It's not. But when you start getting to these, I guess, levels of mass scale, you have to make certain concessions in order to to do that. And when you're feeding hundreds and hundreds of millions of people and you, you got to cut corners, I guess. I shouldn't say that because I know that the most, a lot of people are doing things the right way, but, you know, to knock a hunter who's managing a state, re, uh, managing a public resource that's helping grow populations, helping restore the environment, but then also feeding their family that's really, truly had no impact on the earth in any negative way. This is a cycle that keeps feeding itself. So yes, we go out and we killed, I don't know, say six ducks or whatever this afternoon. Hey, yeah, unfortunately there's six there, but that's opening up the herd. It's going to allow better genetics and stuff to kind of come in. And then make room for the new yeah, ones coming yep. in. It's, and you're feeding family. It's that cycle of life that keeps going around that. Uh, I, that's I think very well said. Very important. That's very important. It's very well said that you said it in a matter of that you're going to knock a hunter that let's just go. Let's just, we'll go into this. We're, gonna, we're getting ready to go do something here. We're going to end this podcast by this. These little short podcasts we're doing in between hunts. We're hunting hard up here in your home state. Of Wisconsin. This is where you're born and raised. Not very yeah. far from where we nah, sit right now. About 40 you're, living down the road. In, you're living in Salt Lake City now, working your butt off for Traeger. But um, you're killing it. You're killing the animal with a skill set. And you're going to get knocked after you are the ultimate conservationist, after you help protect these animals and build habitat and the resource. It's an amazing, it's an amazing lifestyle. I love that you're doing it. But you just mentioned within your talk there, Tyler Stark Traeger Grills, is that we're getting ready to go maybe potentially harvest a few ducks. We got mallards in there and a lot of Canada geese. This is your home state. You're back here in Wisconsin hunting with us. It's an honor for us to have you here. It's been a blast so far, but what kind of emotions go through your head of this lifestyle of, man, just two days ago, I was sitting in an office in Salt Lake City, and now I'm getting ready to go out and get in a ground blind in a cornfield in Wisconsin and call at Canada geese and decoy Canada geese and hopefully be lucky enough to harvest a few and then do what we did the other day with a Canada goose pot pie. Like that's a I crazy mindset. That. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's amazing. And, you know, thankfully there's, there's folks like you and we, have a, we are playing an amazing industry, but educating people, showcasing the, the, how to give them the tools and resources, how to show them how to cook properly. You know, you, you mentioned the, the different walks of life. And I think if the hunting community kind of thought more in the, this communal sense like we do, food is a great equalizer. I can't tell you, and I guarantee Tony will say this, or Joel will say the same thing uh, about the, the pot pie. When somebody eats that, if you didn't tell me that was goose, you would have no clue. And you start introducing people there and food brings people together. And that's why we're able to, to have so many different walks of life is because, I don't know, food doesn't judge people. We want you yeah. to come, we want you to sit at our table. We want you to try it. I want to show you different things. I want to learn your techniques for doing this. I'm, I'm going to try that, you know, and food, food is that one thing I think that still has the ability to bring everybody back together and comes back through education. Resource Man, you're dropping some in. knowledge today, dude. I want you to Sorry, drop a, a little, little long time. No, I like it. I love it. I like it. Uh, I want you to drop a little bit more knowledge before we leave here, before we go get in the blind. We got about a 24 minute drive. I'm excited as heck. I got goosebumps. No pun intended. Is that a pun? I don't know if that's a pun. What is a pun? Hey, the wind's starting to pick up too. I'm getting excited now. Here's the deal. I want you to drop a little bit of that Stark knowledge, Iron Man knowledge, on this provider cookbook. Okay? Like, I know you've looked at it. It's beautiful, right? Uh, I mean, this is exactly what we were looking to do. Very few cookbooks make my kitchen uh, cookbook collection. Uh, it's, It's a beautiful, beautiful book. And uh, sits proudly there. I hope to bring some meat back with me so I can cook some of those recipes. But uh, I think it's one of the the greatest wild game cookbooks I've seen in a long time. Thank you so much. Yeah, we I'm so excited. Chad Mendez, my brothers Clinton Clay, Jennifer, Tom Rashashin, everybody that's in our group. You met Corey here. We have a, 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 a unity of these guys that not everybody's cut from the same cloth, but we kind of get that same general focus of hey. 
This is where we want to be. We want not, it doesn't, you, you may have never eaten wild game a day in your freaking life. But when you're introduced to that lifestyle and you see the passion and the love and the respect that goes into it and all of the different pieces of that puzzle that have to come together to be successful. Waterfowl hunting, there's only 2 million people in America that do it. And there's a reason for that. There's a, a big long list of reasons. One of them is financially, it's very expensive to have consistent success. You can tell yourself all day long, I just need a pair of hip boots and a dozen decoys and I'm going to go out and get them every day. It's not the case. There's a lot of investment in this. Then you have the intimidation factor of being able to identify a bird, of being able to figure out land, dry land versus a water hunt. And then how do I really look like the real thing on water? And then how do I really establish that the birds in the air look at me and they see us looking like ducks, moving like ducks, sounding like ducks, a well-trained dog that's a conservation tool that's going to bring back a cripple that's buried in the reeds. There's all these different pieces of it. So people are like, ah, not. and then on top of that, I got to get up at five in the morning and stand waist deep in water that's cold and maybe some ice. And you know, like there's all these different things. So our job as mentors or the, you know, bringing the new blood into this, the next generation, my daughter's 10. She loves calling ducks. But when I call them, she's like, dad, give it a rest. She loves hunting ducks, but she's not going to go out there every day. I mean, I don't want her to, but I just want to slowly introduce them to the lifestyle. You know what she does love doing every day though? Eating wild game and knowing, oh my gosh, uncle Dave's duck is so good. Dad, can we have that goose tonight with the rendered fish? Like she gets the crispy skin on a speckle belly goose. She's 10. That's how I was when I was 10, watching my dad cook deer steaks around a, a fire. And that's why the provider was born, because my dad taught me, you're going to eat what you kill. And here's how we're going to make it an enjoyable process and experience. And that's what Traegers do. And that's what the providers do. And that's what the foul life and bandit are doing. It's not about raw, raw. Look at us. The, kill, the pulling of the trigger, the, the, the flight of that arrow or the muzzle loader or a slingshot. I don't care how you're doing it. If it's legal and ethical, that's the smallest part of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm unapologetic about killing them. But I want people to go, wow, you can do that with that? And plus have the most fun in your life, ribbing your buddies and calling and seeing your dog work and having a great time. Like it's the best lifestyle in the history of the whole wide world, being a provider, hunter, fisher, gatherer. Do you agree? Absolutely. Okay, let's go be one. That's Tyler Stark, Traeger Grills, the Fat Life Podcast. We'll be back at you with these little short segments straight out of Wisconsin, straight out of Wisconsin. I'm a crazy duck hunter named CB. I was born in Reno, NV. I do it real B-I-G, real V-I-P. I got my boy Tyler, that's T-E-Y, L-E-R. We ain't scared. We get in our car. We go to the field. You know the deal. Hand me the deck of cards. This ain't hard. We're going to get some geese. We're going to get some ducks. And with a little luck, that Traeger Grill will be on 285 with a little bit of smoke tyler stark ain't no joke it's time to get toked up on this music by brent cobb i'm about to rob a bank but not a real bank just a bank of ducks when they fly into my decoys because cb chad building is the real mccoy let's hit that jargon call i won't fall like legends of the fall with brad's pit i'm just here to spit a little freestyle rhyme and now it's time that we get off the mic and go chase the ducks in wisconsin right by green bay i don't think that i like brett Favre as much as i do Aaron Rodgers because he throws the pigskin a long way like Uncle Rico and Napoleon Dynamite. I just might pull the trigger tonight. Let's go fly a kite that looks like a goose and attract them close. Tyler Stark, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Let's, Let's make go. it happen.